Hello, this is Chris Winard with Infinity Yacht Sales, and we are doing a quick walkthrough of the exterior of Spin Doctor Custom Carbon Andrews 40, uh, fresh from a second place trophy in Transpec, and we're going to go walk through it. On deck is Paul, who is the owner. You'll get to meet him shortly. Custom built by Jim Betts and then highly upgraded and modified by the prior owner to do Transpac and then upgraded and well more upgraded with sales and equipment uh, by Paul for this last Transpac um, and we'll get into that in a bit about the plan and how the boat did but as far as this exterior video we're going to start from the bow Hey Chris, thanks a lot. Come on around and we'll start with the bow. We'll go about a, about a certain and we'll talk about everything on the exterior for you. Right here we've got a six foot carbon bow sprit. And out at the very end, that's where the nylon sails go. So all of your spinnakers go out there. Um, there's uh, two um, uh, Martin breakers. Martin breakers that are uh, out there that basically uh, allow a, a, a release and a letterbox uh, takedown of spinnakers that are out there uh, on each of the two tack lines. So there's two tack lines out there that will allow for peels. Uh, back in the middle of the bow sprit, very cool, we got this uh, two to one uh, tack line. And now this is where you can put jibs. So we've got a, a, a very big Genoa and also a nice J0 that'll attach to the two to one in the middle of the bow sprit and making a very powerful upwind boat. And I should add, they have locks up top, so you lock them, and then you use the two to one to get tension, and they're both on furlings. Yep. Uh, coming on back to the um, actual foil, is a brand new foil uh, put on in 2023. Um, so that's, that's perfectly new and upgraded. Heading down here, inside right here, there's the tack. For your um, for your jibs, it's on a ten to one, so there's actually a tack adjustment, so you can you can downhaul the tack of your jibs right here with a ten to one adjustment that's back in the cockpit. Okay. Now also this will allow for the rolling furler that's in storage to be put on. We can attach a rolling furler to this uh, for cruising or for uh, minimalized racing. Okay. Short-handed um, racing. We've got the anchor locker here. Uh, anchor locker is real roomy. You can actually stand in it. Uh, this is where your 10 to one adjustment is. It's all stowed away. No lines on the deck to be eaten by the sun. But you got the 10 to one. And then down here, we've also got the access for the hydraulic ram. That um, So there's a hydraulic ram adjustment for the four stay itself which is separate from the 10 to one tack point for the jibs, okay? Um, two Martin breakers that tie off down inside of here with Martin breaker retrieval lines so that once you've released the spinnaker and done your letterbox takedown, you can bring everything back in, all right? Working our way backward, we got the hatch down into the V-berth right here. Here's your hatch down into the head and the, and the uh, head ventilation. Um, and, and then here's your hatch uh, down into the main salon. Uh, this, this, this apparatus here is just what we keep to stop the foil from flopping when we're in that uh, anchor. All right, moving back, here's our, our uh, mast. Uh, mast uh, has uh, two jib halyards two spinnaker halyards and a staysail halyard, which is uh, up uh, at right at the level of the spreaders. And the staysail, the staysail is gonna come and the tack spot for the staysail is right here. So right here, you've got your, um, your Genoa staysail here, and then you can put your, your jib staysail here with a spinnaker, so you got the probably the most advanced 
triple headed rig on a 40 foot carbon boat in the world uh, as far as the research that I've done. Moving back, you got your uh, jib cars, adjustable jib cars up top here. This is a carbon fiber rigging. The whole boat's carbon fiber rigged. This has been die tested, okay? So we're, we're sweet there. Everything leads back to the cockpit. Okay, with a, the ability to bring any, everything to either winch with the organizer right there. Working our way back. Right here is your pit. This is your central command center. Starboard spinnaker halyard, starboard jib halyard. Okay, this is your two to one tack line in the center of your bowsprit. Here's your main halyard. Here's your reef line. Here's your port jib halyard. Here's your port spinnaker halyard. These are your, your um, vang. Sorry, your vang. These are your spinnaker locks right here, okay? Locking and unlocking the spinnaker halyard. No wear and tear on your spinnaker halyards while you're doing long downwind runs. And here's your tacks, okay? Tack lines out at the, out at the end of the bowsprit, okay? Jib car adjustments right here. All of it right here one control module perfect okay moving back into the cockpit you got uh two sets of winches okay so main jib or spinnaker on either side right here moving back a little bit further here's our traveler traveler continuous main sheet okay it's a continuous main sheet all the way around with a continuous traveler sheet. So no ends to lose. Here's a really nice addition that, that I put on the boat, anodized aluminum uh, grab rails that are in front of your wheels. Uh, the wheels are carbon fiber. Everything on the boat's carbon except the boom. Aluminum boom, everything else is carbon. Okay, so th this is a great grab point when you're out in the slop. Dual carbon wheels with a, a wedge that goes into these these little points in the deck, so that when you're up on a heel, you're standing flat, steering from your upwind side, either side. Moving back further, we've got this lazarette, very large lazarette, with your steering quadrant and plenty of storage back here for fenders extra sails that are for emergency only, water, etc. You've got a, a the well pump is also under here. Um, and we've got a few antennas coming out over here. We've got the XM antenna. Uh, we've got the B and G uh, AIS antenna. You got the satellite phone. And then over here, we got the pep wave. This is the pep wave. So this attaches to a uh, standard cellular network and we get cellular data up to about oh, eight to 10 miles offshore. Um, so we can route off of a, just a cellular data card for about eight to 10 miles uh, before getting far enough offshore that we have to utilize the data off of, this, off of the satellite phone. Two satellite phones on the boat. Um, moving back here, here's our, here's our hydraulic backstay with a brand new Dyneema backstay up here. Um, and this is the configuration that we preferred uh, for a rating with a pinhead main for our Transpac run, which did us very well. Uh, the boat also has uh, running backstays, so we can remove the hydraulic and the Dyneema, and it's got a full setup for running backstays as well that are in storage, uh, along with a fat top main that can be run uh, basically when you got a, a, a very well seasoned crew. That, that, that knows how to take those uh, running backstays because it does remove uh, a winch from you for your for your trimming. And, and what is this uh, little gem right here? Oh, oh yeah, the Cyclops. So three of these on the boat. This is the one on the backstay. Uh, we've got um, one on the forestay and actually one up on the two to one. These are load sensors. And so these load sensors actually feed into the B&G unit and you can also uh, access them 
via uh, Bluetooth on your cell phone. And what these do is they read out a, 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 a pounds per square inch load. So you've got actual load sensors to read an exact number, whether it's 1,500 pounds or 1,643 pounds. Uh, this is an accurate load sensor uh, for your hydraulic systems. Um, so that you can recreate your settings for your fastest boat speed every single time. And the Cyclops set up that Cyclops app uh, will record all of those things. But one of the interesting things is that you can keep track of the different poundage when you're playing the main sheet. And then different playing with different sails, it'll you can get much more accurate than just the little dial on your panel. Uh, this is the scudgeon for the uh, emergency uh, rudder steering system right here. Okay. And we got a nice little step for a wonderful uh, full access um, coming on and off the boat. Uh, right here we've got, uh, um, this is the access for the kelp cutter for the rudder. Boat has two kelp cutters. Rudder kelp cutter is under here. And so that's a, a steel bar that just pulls up like this, down, kelp cutting, cut kelp off of your rudder. There's also a kelp cutter up on the keel that I didn't show you when we walked by, but here it is, right here. Kelp cutter for the keel, okay? So Southern California, uh, with a bulb keel, you probably don't want to be racing without a kelp cutter. This boat has a kelp cutter on both the keel and the rudder. Um, exteriorly, um, we've got plenty of uh, cockpit seating. Uh, there's cockpit cushions um, for when you're cruising. Uh, the boat is, is set up uh, very well to take care of everything from here. You can literally sail this boat with two people or with a crew of 10, uh, either way. It's really, it's, it's set up for whatever you need to do. This is the hydraulic panel right here. So you've got control over the hydraulic backstay behind you and control of the hydraulic forestay up in front uh, with just a switch here. And uh, here's where you put the bar in which is stored right here. Uh, we've got up top here, we've got full B and G instrumentation uh, that connects to the Zeus 5000 on both sides. And uh, there's uh, four repeaters that are on the mast under the cover here um, that are programmable. And that's where you're gonna have a large displays of your boat speed and your wind angles and the data that you like while you're racing or cruising well very cool let's uh let's move on down to the interior in fact let's just keep, keep doing this hot take fantastic let's go all right come on down so really nice entryway down into uh the galley and salon you know I, I gotta tell you this boat i've never seen a boat set up better as a racer cruiser so right here, as you enter, you can see that you've got a beautiful big salon with obviously a, a keel-stepped uh, mast. This is a Hall Spar carbon fiber mast, one of the best carbon fiber masts ever made in the industry. All right. You got a very nice salon, with all memory foam and beautiful storage, storage behind, storage underneath. Our battery systems are centrally located right up, right here over the top of the keel. And they're, they're right under in here. You got two lithium batteries and a, start, a lithium starting battery that's on a completely separate uh, circuit. Everything uh, completely rewired as of last year. Make sure that the uh, length of wiring from the batteries uh, to the discharge points is exactly the same so that the batteries discharge perfectly together. Okay, and uh, let's go back to the galley. I want to show you some great spots on the galley here. First of all, this is our galley, but, and you wouldn't know it, but where's the motor? Right here, right, right underneath in the best possible spot. 
Here's, here's your 30 horse yen mark. Okay. Sitting centrally just behind the mast and the sail drive coming off of this is just behind your keel in the keel's wake. So no wake of its own. Upgrades on this have been uh, upgrades to the electrical system. And right over here, take a peek, serpentine drive, not multiple belts. Okay. So all, all upgraded serpentine drive, very, very well maintained Yanmar motor. Okay, here, we'll just pop these guys right back in. Beautiful, very clean, very accessible, easy to work on. Full galley for a race boat. Two sinks, we got a refrigerator and a freezer, okay? And then you got a full working propane stove. Propane storage is in the aft end of the boat. Nice working stove with oven that's gimbaled. Beautiful, clean, easy to clean, easy to maintain. Standard six crew spots for your hot beverages. Lightweight and very accessible cupboards and storage. <clears throat> six spots for your crew cold beverages. Very high tech paper towel holder. Yep, Spectra. <clears throat> um, everything is geared on this boat to uh, allow for easy transfer sails. Right here, here's your, here's your, here's your water supply for the sinks. But that's not going to get broken when you're dragging sails out of the boat. This here is your water supply for your water maker. This is your test tube before you're going to uh, fill your tanks or if you're going to get a little drinking water. So right there. Also perfectly accessible, but out of the way, okay? Let's take a look over here at our nav station. Beautiful nav station. Here's your, here's your nav table uh, with your storage, all the ship's documentation, and our, our, trans, uh, our plug in for the VHF out in the back. Right here's where the boat computer Velcro's on. Boat computer plugs into power and network. Boat computer can go to the PepWave Wi-Fi network on the boat, either by plug-in or by Wi-Fi. It functions either way, okay? Full 12-volt panel right here. And then here's our nav system with the B&G Zeus 5000. Full AIS with both transmit and stealth mode. And then you've got the, the uh, VHF. Um, and that's the up-to-date VHF with all the bells and whistles on it. Uh, this is a this is your onboard uh, look at your two lithium-ion batteries. This is a Vectron Energy Control Unit. So this is uh, where we can Bluetooth in to get a look at all of our power, uh, and um, can select and take a peek at uh, when you're discharging and when you're charging and keep a look on all, all of your uh, elect electrical situation there. You got a wet storage locker here for things that come down. We call this the toy box. This is where we keep our, our uh, various uh, items like our, our blocks and uh, yeah, blocks and our winch handles and our, uh, you know, when, when we're offshore, our, um, Jack lines. Jack lines and our um, extra various other things that we use, like, for instance, when we want to put uh, one of these guys on a sheet when we're trimming, right? What do we want to call that thing, Chris? Barber hauler. Yeah, a little barber hauler, right? Yep. And our, our throw rope. Okay, so uh, there's that. Take a look here. Here's the captain's salon. So this has a door. The door comes off for racing. Gosh, it only weighs about half a pound. Um, the uh, port aft cabin is, is technically the uh, owner's cabin. That's a full queen, basically, right there with memory foam. Underneath it, right here, here's where the water maker lies, right down in here. So here's, here's your water maker, and then here, Here's one 50 gallon port freshwater tank underneath this guy right here. And then here, right here, you've got a pipe berth. 
So these are removable when you're cruising, but they're absolutely wonderful when you're racing because you can put three guys in here and keep all your weight to the appropriate side. With that divider cloth. Yeah, and there's a lead cloth right here that comes up and attaches. So you got one, two, three sleeping areas. Fans, you got a fan up here. And we got a fan back there. So you got dual fans. That was an extra fan that I added for TransPak. You got plenty of air moving around when you got your uh, your race crew that's off watch catching some Z's. Okay. Uh, on the starboard side, we've similar, same type of uh, cabin, just no door, right? So another quarter berth. It's also about a queen size, memory foam. Um, Inboard up here, we've got the back side of the hydraulic control panel. Outboard down here, well, this is the other 50 gallon fresh water supply tank right down. Accessible right here with a standard lee cloth that's going to come up when you're racing or put away when you got a couple in here going to Catalina. Again, the uh, this berth is removable um, when you're cruising and it's absolutely wonderful when you're racing. And those are the cockpit cushions. Yep, cockpit right cushions right here. And there's our, our cockpit doors. <coughs> uh, down below here, this is where we keep all the tools. So standard tool bags um, with a, both a bosun's chair and a harness. All right, so your four deck guys in harness when you're racing and underway to go up and in the bosun's chair when you're at the dock. And right down in this bag here, that's where we've got the uh, cutoff wheel. Uh, so cutoff wheel for rigging, uh, should you ever run into a DMAS situation, God forbid we never do that. And a full uh, complement of tools and a little bit of oil and transmission oil, okay? Um, and then up in here, that's where we keep the garbage bags and the paper towels, right? Uh, and then a little more supplies up here. These are our tape and our flags and our sound makers. Okay. And another Velcro spot to put a laptop. Yep. So secondary spot to put the laptop along with multiple USB and 12 volt power uh, accesses. All right. So uh, you can always um, navigate the boat from the upwind side um, when you're heeled over. All right, good. Uh, let's go forward. Let's go forward. Great. Moving our way forward. Should, should also mention that it has a very good Bose internal and cockpit sound system. Yeah, the stereo rocks. <laughs> we could turn it up at the end of the video. The stereo is great. Uh, one of the cool things that I like is the here's the here's the crew bag storage. Right here we've got the, uh, what do you call these, Chris? These little guys that hold the it's sort of like um, um uh, it's like a luff line. Luff line. Luff it's like a luff, bolt rope. Bolt rope. It's a bolt rope holder installed, what? and we got bolt rope installed on each of the crew bags, right? And you got glow in the dark numbers, okay? So in the middle of the night, when you're changing shifts, your crew's got access to their bags hanging here. Easily found seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six on the other side, and the seventh up front right here. Uh, so really nice organization and storage when you're racing. Um, let's move up into the head. All right. This is the location in the boat where you're going to find the only piece of wood. All right, let's get a look down here. There, there is a carbon fiber. That, that, that's the only piece of wood on the boat right down there below you, Chris. That's, the, that's, our, that's our shower drain and our, our token piece of teak. All right. Um, and right here, uh, this is your module. This is your speed module. And we obviously put a, the blank is in when we're not operating the boat. And it's also the uh, sump pump for the shower, the door for the head here also uh, is removable. We don't typically race with it, but it's real nice when you're headed to Catalina or have guests. 
Uh, over here on the storage side, we've got a sink, um, freshwater sink. And here's your shower. So here's the shower, shower head right here that comes up with shower controls. In here, we've got our first standard day first aid kit. Right here is our defibrillator, okay? So we've got a defibrillator and an EKG on boat for offshore racing. Uh, some electrolyte solutions. So this is our this is our first aid area, and then a, a larger first aid kit um, in our one of our emergency buckets down below here. Let's get a look at the head itself because that's interesting. This head is a Levac. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't have the standard pump on the side. Uh, a Levac head has the pump separated from from the head itself. And the pumps in the wall. What that does is it it, it means that uh, here. Let's demonstrate right here. Here's the pump for the head. Right now. There we go. So let me lift this up. So so the 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 bowl itself forms suction. Uh, as part of the evacuation system. But what this is, is this is the most awesome tertiary bilge pump that you've got on the boat. God forbid you get into a critical situation. This is an extra bilge pump. Should the water ever get over the level of the head, this is another bilge pump on your boat. And this thing isn't gonna get clogged up like a lot of the heads with the pump that's next to the head. This thing is bomb proof and wonderful. <laughs> It does the job for you. I'll we'll attest to that. Um, up, up forward, since I'm here, got a hanging locker for your life, life vests, hanging locker for sheets, and we were hanging, uh, trans factor hanging uh, foul weather gear off this to you know, try and keep them dry. Nope. Uh, or a hanging locker. Um, this converts into a V berth, so you've got more cruising comfort. That's right. Yep, we got the boards and the cushions. Those are currently in storage. That line that you see going up there is the uh, Spectre line that supports the uh, the uh, halyard for the um, for the staysail. Mm -hmm. And that's easily removed when you're going to go into cruise mode. Just tuck it right down under the boards and the cushions, and you got room for two to sleep. Um, so, so I guess one of the big things, Paul, is uh, which people, you know, with this boat being as sorted as it is. Um, why are you selling it? So that's, that's a question that I always ask when I buy a boat. Honestly, I love this boat. I don't need to sell it, but I took two and a half years off of my business and I had somebody else working for me and I hit my bucket list. We took this boat and we campaigned it all in, up and down the West coast of the U S and we did Cabo and Puerto Vallarta and the islands races and the Cabrillo series and did well and everything. And then we hit our bucket list and we raced to Hawaii. We did Transpac 2023. We came in second in our, in our class and overall something like 21 out of 65 boats. It did very well. I don't want to see the boat sit. And right now I'm working 80 hours a week. Um, so if you and your crew are ready to go do Transpac next year, this is the boat for you. I don't want to see it sit, but I love the boat. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, thanks, Paul. Once again, this is the Andrews 40 Spin Doctor, carbon fiber, Jim Jim Betts built, and I'll put the links to the listing and contact below.